Making a short film is one of the hardest things you can do as a filmmaker. That's why you should watch this ultimate guide to pull off your first short. Helping you find the right story, getting actors, going over the costs, having a smooth production and edit it the best way possible. I just finished my first short and this is everything I learned in the past 4 months. First of all, I recommend you to watch my result. It's just 11 minutes long and will help you understand this guide and the scope of the project better. Let's start with chapter 0. Story. I wanted to start with a small project. Therefore, I tried to write the script with as little roles as possible in mind. Especially when you don't have a reference short film, it can get hard to convince actors to take part in your project. It helped that I had my YouTube channel, so I could show them that I can deliver great results. It's also easier to convince people to be a part of your project for one or two days instead of a week. Additionally, I stick to only three locations and I knew I had access to two of them for sure. It saves budget and time when you don't have to constantly change locations. But even three can be quite a lot, so I recommend you to start with one or two locations, which you have access to and now inside out. Also, I thought about how many people, excluding actors, I wanted to work with on this project. With all these things in mind, I started writing the script. It's really helpful to have a short story, but it's even more important to write a compelling one. There's no formula out there on how to get a great story. But I started with the outline first. I wrote down ideas I got over several years. And while taking the train, I actually got this one. So keep your eyes open, keep your mind open and maybe the right idea comes to you as well. And don't forget to constantly write it down. Maybe some different ideas can form a great single idea. In case you made a mistake and didn't watch the short film already, you can pause now and read this summary. When I wrote my story for the first time, it contained two more scenes, but I looked at it in a critical way. Always think about, does this scene add much more information to the short film that the audience need? Or can I get the information across in a different way, a more simpler way? Let me give you an example. I wanted the protagonist to have a blog where she could write down things that happened throughout the day as a way of therapy. That should have been a tribute to John's blog in Sherlock because let's face it, this series is pretty awesome and I wanted to connect with it. And I don't want it to talk to Siri. It doesn't even make sense, I love you Siri. Close. But let's go back to topic. The protagonist would have been able to write down that she already saw the person in the past and is scared. That would tell the audience that isn't a new phenomenon and she already saw them in the past. But I figured out well, I don't need to add the information that she added the person in the past to show that it gets worse and worse because you already see the person two times before the final bathroom scene, which I personally think is enough to establish the person. To be able to still show the audience that she's in mentally health treatment, I just added a simple message in the beginning and now these one or like two scenes, which would have cost me three minutes, are cut out and the short film got even shorter and more easy to produce. When I was happy with my story, I pitched it to a few friends and they liked it. It's really helpful to include others in the process to identify weak parts. After I had my story complete, I continued with chapter 1, pre-production. I didn't want it to do the short film for a specific event or festival, so I knew that I could take as much time as I need for this chapter because this is probably the most important one. The order of the following steps isn't necessarily the most efficient one, but that's what I did. I wrote a shooting schedule pretty early on, before I had any crew, because I wanted to plan out everything to show the crew what I wanted to and know how much time I would need. I tried to give each scene as much time as possible to prevent pressure of time. And I planned for breaks for on one side the crew to relax and on the other side change locations or change the lightning. Also one day was just one actor and the other day were both the actors, so it's more efficient. For structure I chose 5 columns. Shot, technical description, content description, props and notes. Each table was for location, for the headline was the location, time, 
outfits and props needed in this scene. I try to describe every shot as detailed as possible, even more detailed than in the script before because I knew this will be like my master plan. Later I rearranged them depending on the setup. Most of the time the order was influenced by light setup and then camera setup. But some scenes were really continuity heavy like the fight scene, so in that case I just left the structure as it was in the beginning, so just chronological. But it really helped to rearrange the shots within the other scenes because it decreased the time needed for each scene significantly. Next I wrote a list of things I would need for the project. This contains every prop and things I would need for practical effects. For example, in the end there was a scene where the woman should cut herself. As for obvious reasons, I can't do this practically, I mean like for real practically, I needed to have a solution. After I had a detailed overview of the project, I could focus on getting actors and locations. There are different ways to get actors. The easiest one is when you're already connected with them. But as we already discussed that we didn't made a short film before, I haven't done one and you watching probably haven't done one as well. So we probably don't know actors. That's why I just googled actors Münster and I found various websites with a lot of results. On this website these were like crew-united.com which I think is a more international one and filmmakers.de which is a German one but there are probably sites for all countries out there and then you can just google for yourself to find one. Both of these websites had an option to filter for specific needs but my project was very general so I just searched for an actor between 20 and 34 years old and I think this matched my story really good. Of course, you may need more specific filters for your project, like gender or specific skills, but for my project it wasn't important. In fact, I had an actor in mind when I wrote the script for the first time, but went with an actress instead because that's how it turned out. When I found fitting actress, so I just googled their name and found personal email addresses or Instagram and contacted them that way. And this is, I think, the easiest way to get in touch with the actor and don't really have to go with the agency or different steps in between. I contacted various actors to get different offers and get different rejections and this is the email I wrote to them. It is, of course, in German as I'm from Germany and this is a German project but this is a rough translation. For my second role, the antagonist, I asked a friend which looked pretty similar to an actress that I got at this time and it wasn't really a hard role just with a little bit of gestures, running and okay a fight scene but that turned out pretty great anyway and these were just the challenges and she could wear a mask and that's why the most challenging points of acting which is getting the right emotions and face were completely unnecessary and that's why a friend could easily do it. But maybe for your project you need two or more actors. Locations are almost as important as the actors. Due to the planning this step was really easy. I could film in my aunt's flat which is right next to where I live and we did most of the interior scenes over there. The main scene, the bathroom scene was shot here because we have a bathtub. One scene takes place in a forest. We have a couple of forests just a few minutes away so I already knew them and I knew that there weren't many people so we could just go there and film but normally you have to ask for permission especially with bigger production and crews. The third location was a cemetery. I wanted to shoot a very specific one because we already own a grave there. That way we wouldn't disturb anyone. I called the administration and tried to let this project sound as little as possible and was very polite. They agreed and that's how I got every three locations for free. So try to use your friends and their contacts. Maybe someone knows someone who has the perfect location for your project. Or try to get the number of the owner and just ask them very polite. And if I would have stopped at this point of preparation, I probably would have made a film that looks like 90% of the other films out there. But I wanted to get to the top 10% and probably you want to get there as well. So that's why we will take a look at the technical aspects in the following. Most people probably don't even think about it, but I actually thought about it for days. Aspect ratio. 
I didn't want it to make it just movie aspects. I challenged myself to transport my story in every possible way and aspect ratio is a part of it. There are tons of videos, 10 minutes or longer, explaining what aspect ratio is. But I sum it up for you really, really quick to just get on one page. Aspect ratio stands for the width to height ratio of a picture. Most movies are shot in 233 by 1, which you have these black bars on the top and at the bottom. Most TV shows were shot in 1.77 or better known as 60 by 9. This all has to do with the past, but nowadays it's important that we are much more free to do whatever we want. Steven Spielberg, for example, uses widescreen for the majority of the film and IMAX, which is a visually taller format, to show something is more important, like a fight scene of Batman or an outdoor scene in interstellar of the space. It just gives the audience a different feeling. But there are other ways to implement it as well. The Grand Budapest Hotel, for example, uses different ratios to show different periods of time. So in both cases, Steven Spielberg and the Grand Budapest Hotel, the aspect ratio changes throughout the film. But it doesn't have to be that aggressive. You can also look at films like Jurassic Park, which were shot entirely in a different ratio, 16 by 9, because the reason dinosaurs are tall. And with a taller ratio, it's easier to fit a dinosaur in it. I didn't want it to change the aspect ratio throughout my film. I thought about it, but I decided not to do it because that would be too much in an 11 minute film. So I decided to go with a slightly narrow aspect ratio, which is 14 by 9. It isn't a typical 16 by 9, which you know from most of the content out there on YouTube. And it isn't as narrow as 4 by 3. So I think it's a good sweet point. With the black bus on the sides and with a more tight frame, you have the feeling of more intimacy to the character and feel more connected. And the character feels more isolated from the world around him. So for example, in close-ups, you can get really more close and fill more of the frame with the face instead of in a widescreen picture. But besides aspect ratio, there are other ways to influence the feeling of the film as well. This one is more obvious and relies on the color palette. For my film, I chose a color palette that changes throughout the movie. In the beginning, the picture looks really warm and throughout the movie, it gets colder and even more desaturated. That way I could show the change in the mental state of the protagonist. To exaggerate this color effect, I matched the outfit as well. First of all, it's a red outfit. We see it the first time when she's at the cemetery. This also connects to the parents which died a few months ago and indicates as red is the color of love that she feels the love and the connection to her parents still. A little detail is that she wears a necklace with a red heart attached. This is the only continuous element throughout the whole film and should show the audience that there's the laugh for the parents. Later, that outfit changes to a more desaturated and darker one with a beige one in the middle and gray one at the end. But I didn't want to include a black outfit as this should have been reserved to the antagonist, which is like her dark side. To get my vision straight and be able to communicate with my crew, I decided to do a small mood board. It isn't a really complex one, but you sort of get an idea of the feeling I want to communicate. I had one page with the lightning of the scenes. To get examples, try to look for existing ones that show the style you want to create. I really like the look of blinds to create depth and structure. And some scenes will be shot in the dark. So I wanted to show how I imagine the look of that as well. The feelings of the protagonist are most of the times really common ones, which everyone knows how they look like. Grief or fear, you know how that looks. But try to describe when you mean that a person feels salvation but is also scared of what is about to come. Luckily I watched a few movies in the past and knew that I had exactly these feelings seen before. So I took a few screenshots and added them into the mood board which helped the actress to understand what I had in mind. I moved on with pre-production and used the Silence Link app and Adobe Fresco to draw out what lighting setups I would want to create. This helped the crew to build the setup simultaneously with me. It also helped me to think about what equipment I would need for the shoot. So make a list of the stuff you need and think about what do you already have, what do you need to rent 
and what do you maybe have to buy. I planned with the equipment I already owned and knew I would have access to another Aperture 120D Mark II, a 60D and a Godox VR150. Though there was just a C-stand left because there are two rules and this is you can't have enough C-stands and you can't have enough light. So I wanted to rent a C-stand but ended up buying it because it was a really great deal. These are the theoretically things you can plan. Part of the pre-production is to also test practical things. And in my case, one of the hardest things to test was the catching arm scene. My first idea, putting a tube on the forearm didn't work at all, as I wouldn't be able to cut through it. I looked for inspiration online and found a solution to use a shrink tubing instead. The great part of shrink tubings is that they get smaller when you heat them up. First of all, I have to close the end with a plastic screw. I add the construction to a tube to give it a longer range and add that to a garden sprayer to increase the blood's pressure. Now we have to attach the shrink tubing to my mother's arm. With the time-consuming use of wax, it looks horrible. So I can't realize the shot the way I wanted it to be, cutting in the arm and seeing the blood flow out of it. However, I think the best compromise is to block the camera's view of the cut with the arm and just attach the construction in a simple way. It's also important to pierce a small hole at the end of the tube for the air to get out. From the top, it looks kinda unspectacular, but from the bottom, it looks realistic. Even though this scene doesn't add to the process, I think it's funny to see my mom getting frightened by the high pressure of the blood. It was spread all over my father's clothes and the ground. I think this is one of the best examples why it's important to prepare certain things in the pre-production. Doing all of this on set would have taken way too long. I also had to give the airsoft gun I ordered a more realistic look. Okay, so I bought this gun on Amazon for around 25 euros and now it's time to make it look more realistic. I found a great video explaining it and the goal is to give it the metallic look that every gun has because normal guns aren't made out of plastic. It seems even more realistic when you have some scratches on it and you can see the metal underneath it. So there is no metal underneath it, so we're gonna add it on top, but it will look like the color disappeared on these parts. I'm gonna use this sponge for it, and I'm gonna use this gray color spray. Okay, you should use this probably outside, and I'm gonna use this sponge and just try to not mess up my 25 euro gun. I think this will look pretty awesome. If you're interested in this gun, I will link it down below as every prop I will use. But now I'm gonna leave it as it is because I think it looks pretty cool. It looks definitely more used now. And it's really that simple to increase the production value and let a prop look more realistic. Oh yes, and as every especially low budget project, there are of course things that go wrong. My main actress had to cancel the project because there were changes at her work. But luckily I'm still connected with another actress she answered the mail as well and we had talked already, but the only issue was that she wanted to get paid and the other one didn't want to, but now I'm gonna write back to her and explain the situation and hopefully she's still willing to help out. Yeah, das klingt ja schon mal super. Ich schreibe dann einfach alles Richtige und dann sehen wir uns dann. Gut, bis dann. Ciao. Okay, that was the actress and she still wants to be a part of the project. That's really great. However, the only issue is that she has to take the train by 1 p.m. on Sunday, which is quite unfortunate when you want to record until 11 p.m. But that leads us to rescheduling. So we're gonna take the second day and put it first because she can arrive on Thursday and then we can record on Friday as well. But that means that only one of three other crew members is available on Friday, so it probably will be a little bit more stressful then, but taking a look at the scene, I think it's still manageable and I don't have another choice, so it has to work that way. Pre-production is finally done. Now we can move on with shooting, but that will be discussed in the next part. Just click here or subscribe so you don't miss the release of part 2 next week. Bye!